I like to be in the middle here. I don't like to be over here or here. No, but anyhow, uh, it's like a scale. Right? Like the blood moon that was in Libra? Yeah, there's a blood moon. It's right in the middle, right, right there. Uh, you know, it's God speaking. And the blood moon seen in America, meaning that God, we are in the scales, okay? So we need to be in the right scales, in the right side, not the left. No left. I'm a lefty, okay? But I do a lot of things with my right hand. You're a soul. Absolve it. Okay. Uh, Bukid Bar, the first portion of the fourth book of the Torah. Numbers 1 1 to 4 20. I welcome all those online. And in the future, that might be online. <laughs> And and uh, and I say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos in Yiddish. Okay. Now here's what's interesting about these last two books of the Torah. Do you know that the names of them are literally made up of the same three letters? They did not, but in the way it's put together, like for instance, Ben Midbar in Hebrew is there's a bet and. Uh, a mem and a, a, a daver, or a davar, okay? And uh, and then next month's portion is called devarim, which is devar with the im on it. <laughs> In other words, it's plural, okay? Which means the words, okay? So, but it's interesting. There's another meaning to the word midbar, okay? It's in your notes, okay? It means the wilderness. But everybody translates it as numbers. Now, I'm sorry, I never looked it up as to why they call it numbers. Because that's not the meaning of it. It means wilderness. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of people that are upset. A lot of terrible, furious things happened this week. But I hate to say it, it was just on time. Okay, because as soon as we get out of the book of Leviticus by Gra. We go from, you know, from uh, learning about the precepts of God and, in a way, trying to prepare, and it's in the bar, the desert. Now, let me just share this with you. There's two ways you can see the desert. You can see it, that it's hot, and it's really hot today, and I think I did that on purpose, okay? So this would be like above 100 today, or around 100. Okay, so so um, th there's two ways of seeing it. There either is it's so hot I can't stand it. Lord, why are you doing this? And you start complaining. Okay, and then there's the other side of it. There is a side of harvest. It's time for the harvest. It's time to bring the souls in. It's time to be a farmer and do the work of the harvest. Now, we are all city people, okay? I mean, many of you, is anybody here, was anybody raised on a farm? Okay, well, praise the Lord, you guys know. Okay. But what I'm saying is that this is farm time, really. And it's also blessing time, where we get to see the, the fruit of our laborers and, you know, things like that. We, Yeshua said on the Feast of Shavuot, which, by the way, is next week, next Sunday, but we'll be celebrating it next Saturday evening. Um, Shavuot is all about going out into the harvest. Yeshua, at one of the Shavuots, before he, he went to the cross, he said, they say four months till the harvest, but I tell you, the fields are white into harvest. Everything about the summer is the fields being white into harvest. It's a time of the harvest. Now, Israel, when they were wandering... And they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years because they would not believe God. They sent seven spies, and we'll be reading about this in a few, in some weeks. Okay, they sent spies to check out the land. Uh, actually, I call them the 12 tour guides because in the Hebrew, the word for spy is actually tour. They toured the land. They didn't spy out the land. That was the first tour, tour to Israel. Oh, uh, for Israel. Okay, so they, they went, they, they spied out the land. And they saw giants, they saw, you know, armies, and they, they were afraid, and they had no confidence. 
and they had a very low self-esteem. They had a slavery mentality. And even though God did all the miracles he did to bring them to that point, it had only been a couple of years. And he did all these miracles. He parted the sea. Okay? He led them by a cloud by day, a fire by night. And, and then he, all the plagues from Egypt, all the things he did. And yet he can't take care of a few giants. God can take care of a few giants. Faith means that no matter how large the creature is that wants to kill you, God's going to kill him. Amen. Okay. Amen. That's faith. Amen. That's, there were two that believed. Joshua, who was Moses' servant, and Kadesh. Okay. And it's funny, but actually, Kadesh wasn't even a part of Israel. He was like a Gentile, so it's like a Jew and a Gentile. <laughs> there they are, two, again, everything about Shavuot is the Jew and the Gentile together. Unity, okay, love, okay. Uh, so, now, okay, Israel made that mistake, but guess who else made that mistake? Israel wandered 40 years until almost everybody died, everybody over the age of 20 years or older, everybody younger than that went into the land, and Joshua went into the land, and Caleb went into the land, because they, they were not faithless. Okay? However, all the rest died in the wilderness over a 40 year period, because they could not believe in God's gift. They could not believe in the inheritance God was giving them, in the, in the heritage God was going to give them. Okay? Well, guess who else couldn't believe it? In the year 325, approximately, there was, there was a man, uh, a Roman emperor named Constantine, okay? And the Christians were under great deal of persecution. Now, mostly non-Jewish congregations, okay? But they were still practicing the Torah, and they were still doing all those things in the light of Messiah, okay? Now, what they did was to stop the persecution, they made an agreement with Rome, a compromise, and a part of that compromise is you're not going to do the Sabbath anymore. You're not going to do the, the festivals. You're going to, you're going to you know, get rid of the law. We don't need the law anymore. You can eat pork. You're not going to eat what's kosher. Okay? And basically, you're not going to celebrate those Jewish feasts anymore. You're going to celebrate the feasts that we worship our gods to. But you can refer to them as connected to Jesus. That's okay as long as you do it on our days, okay? That was the compromise. And when they did that, both the glory and the power of God left the church. Now, there was a remnant God kept. The glory and power left. However, it was given to a Roman Empire. So where do we have to go to get it back? We have to take it back from Rome. And how do we do that? We get rid of all the Roman doctrines that have been taught in the church. We get rid of them all. But only God can convict you. Only the Holy Spirit can convict you the things you need to change. All of us need to change, including me. We still have some remnant things that we were taught. It's been taught for almost 2,000 years. The church went into a desert, a wilderness, for almost 2,000 years. Israel only went for 40. But the church went for nearly 2,000 years. So what, 1,700 years? Less than 1,700 years? Just short of 1,700 years. They're still in it. Okay, so, the wilderness. But we're, we're, we're approaching this coming harvest with hope and expectation. But I'm going to tell you, for those on the left, and those who like religion and organized uh, structures of men, they're going to be in for a big disappointment. Because they're going to be hurting. And they're going to be complaining, and they're going to be yelling, and and losing it. But for all of us who are fixated on our Lord Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus the Messiah, and following His ways, we're going to be blessed. Okay. Keep your eyes on the Lord. When the shaking happens, when it comes to its fullness, and and all the darkness is revealed, and the truth comes out, the truth that's been hidden away comes to the front. And all the darkness and the false ways are brought down. Okay, so that's, I think that's what the Lord wants me to say out of this, out of this first portion. Okay. 
God's in this portion, God's building his army. Okay? His army is Israel. Are you in the army? Who was in the army? I was in the Air Force. Okay. Uh, okay. There are veterans here. Okay, we understand. Okay, listen, this is warfare. It's time to go to war. Maybe it's always been time to go to war. We were born into warfare, okay? I'm telling you, this is warfare. We are in the army of the Lord. Amen. The army of the Lord. That's the best army you can be. Because you never lose. You might lose a battle here and there, but you never lose, really. Because you're following the king and you're following the, the Lord of hosts, the one who, who leads the army. Amen. Okay. So, uh, by the way, the word for army in Israel is Sabah. Sabah. Okay, warfare, the host. The same word as host. It's the same word for warfare. Okay, and basically they were assigned uh, different uh, parts of the uh, Levites. Let's see. You have you have the people of Israel. You had leaders raised up. And I have, by the way, the meanings, the spiritual and prophetic meanings to those in your notes on page two. You had tribes of Israel, and then you had the sons of Yosef. And then um, on the top of page three, you had the rest of the tribes and how they traveled. And the Levites would travel with the glory of the Lord. And different groups of Levites had different jobs regarding the handling of the tabernacle because they had to take it apart and, and reassemble it. Take it apart when they had to leave, reassemble it when they came back. And then there's also certain rules about the most holy items could not be seen even by the Levites. If they were seen by the wrong Levites, they could die. So there's there's a lot involved with this. It's the movements of the armies of Israel. Okay. Uh, Josh, can you put that picture up real quick that we started with? Yeah, it's like there in the center is the is the tent of meeting or the well they also call the Ohel oh, oh, Mohed Moed. Place of appointment, okay, uh, Tabernacle, Mishkan, okay, and you had immediately in front, although it doesn't show it in this picture, in front you had Moses and Aaron and the immediate family of Aaron. And then you had next all all the Levites separated and then around that were all the tribes. So in this list that I've set that I gave you here is the order of it. So you can see who went first, how they were all set up, and uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of that. But the information is there for you if you want to study. And God's leaders, and, and what they're, the names of the, it's very important to know the meanings of the names of the leaders of the tribes. Very important to know the leaders are the ones that lead out to go out to move when God says to go. And to, and to set, set it back up again. Okay. This is what all this is. It's all prophetic about it. You know, I, I have a 17-page teaching that, that I sent, sent out in the email that breaks down the names even further. It has the same information as this, but it breaks down the names even further. And if you, if you want that, then it's on the email. Okay. Uh, and then finally about the priests and the Levites and... They were counted, and, and you know, there's a, a whole thing about how originally God was supposed to take the firstborn of all of Israel, but he didn't take the firstborn of all of Israel because they rebelled against him with the golden calf. So he took all of the tribe of Levi, and in, in this portion is the exchange, how it happened. Okay, and, and that's on page six. Okay, so uh, okay now everything that was done regarding Israel. We're on the last page of these notes. Everything that was done regarding Israel was very orderly. God is a God of order. Okay, and and it says the fear of the Lord in the scriptures is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 33, 8 to 22, Proverbs 9, 10 and 11. We cannot live any other way than to love and be humble and with great respect before our holy Elohim or God. 
God is in control. We only follow his lead. We are not to think that we can lead what God is not saying to do so. That is not treating him as holy. Okay. God is about to show up, and he must be treated as holy from his priests and kings. That's us as believers. The fear of the Lord. We must walk in the fear of the Lord. Now, what is that? Not being afraid of God, but greatly respecting him. When you see God begin to do things, you better not take control. There has been a movement in the church of trying to take control when, when the Spirit of the Lord moves because you think that you're more mature than somebody else. That's pride. And God will take your life if you do that in the coming days. It's that serious. When the glory of the Lord comes and the holiness and the power and the fear of the Lord is restored back to people. You know how the fear of the Lord is going to be restored? When the glory comes, a lot of people die. The fear of the Lord is going to come through the death of many people. We're going to see stuff that's going to be really frightening and scary. Keep your eyes on the Lord. And that the fear of the Lord, he will, he will keep you. He will watch over you. Okay, so there's nothing for you to fear. Just keep your eyes. Know that this is holy, what's coming. And God is saying, be holy as I am holy. He's making us into a holy people. Okay, he's yeah. getting us ready. Okay, it's not something that has ever been known before. They haven't, we haven't known this since the first century. And maybe they didn't even know some of the things of the first century that is going to be revealed to us now. Because this is the end. That was the beginning. Okay, now, going on to Yom Yerushalayim. Why were we, why were we singing about Jerusalem? Tonight begins the, the, the 28th day of the, of the month of E.R., Okay. Now you might say, well, what's ER? Actually, there's another word for it. Actually, in the Bible, it also called it Ziv. Ziv. Z-I-V, -V, I think, or Z-I-F. Yeah, Z-I-V. Ziv. Okay, so, um, this is, there's something very important that happened on this day. Even before Israel took Jerusalem back, God gave it back to them on that day. You remember what I've been sharing with you that in the past? That all the counting of the Omer is God giving us gifts. He's, he's pouring out gifts and skills and abilities and revelations of who he is. Okay, so he's given us all this stuff. He gave Israel the Sabbath. He gave Israel the counting of the Omer, which we're still doing today, the counting of the Omer. He, he gave us all these things so that we get a revelation of who he is and who we are in him. Okay, so... Um, did you guys, any of you hear about Lagda Omer? Or know anything about Lagda Omer? Lagda Omer is called the 33rd day of the Omer. Okay. When I grew up, all I knew about the county of the Omer was Lagda Omer. This is a major holiday on the Jewish, uh, for, the, for the Jews, primarily the Orthodox Jews. Because it's a day, and you can just, you can just see this in the notes. There's this rabbi, his name is Rabbi Simeon Bar Yochai, was believed to be a Mishnah, a Mishnah, which is like, like a storyteller, a commentary, sage, and leading disciple of Rabbi Akiva in the second century. It is believed that on the day of his death, he revealed the deeper secrets of the Kabbalah in the form of the Zohar. Now, please don't get bothered by that. Uh, the Zohar to me is an extra biblical book. There's something you can get out of it, then there's something you can get out of it. Okay, it's not the answer. A landmark text of Jewish mysticism, it's called Jewish mysticism. Uh, many Jews today connected to the Bar Kokhba revolt against the Roman Empire. This was on the 18th of the year, around the 33rd day of the Omer County, Lagba Omer. Okay. Uh, now, here's the thing. There's a lot of bad stuff about the Bar Kokhba revolt. The Jews were fighting and fighting against Rome until they were cast out of Israel and cast out of Jerusalem. Okay, and but, um, unfortunately, the rabbi that everybody respects and loves, Rabbi Akiva, was his name. He said that Bar Kokhba was the Messiah. Okay, and he already set the stage for them to lose. God will not share His glory with another. Okay, Messiah is Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Okay, 
The Talmud states that during the time of Rabbi Akiva, 24,000 of his students died from a divinely sent plague during the counting of the Omer. The Talmud then goes on to say, now the Talmud is a writing also that kind of is a historical writing about what happened in ancient times. Talmud then goes on to say that this was because they did not show proper respect to one another, befitting their level. They begrudged each other of the spiritual levels attained by their comrades. In other words, they were arrogant. I know more than you. Yeah. The Jews celebrate Lagba Omer, the 33rd day of the Omer, to celebrate the end of their death. So there's, there's a, a tradition that it ended on the 33rd day. Okay. Um, so there's a myth that they, these, his disciples stopped dying on the 33rd day. And he says, after the death of Rabbi Akiva's 24,000 students, he taught just five students. Among them was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who later went on to become the greatest teacher of the Torah in his generation. Okay, now, the Jews, they go out, out of their way to celebrate this by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands. Do you know what happened last year? Last year, when we were at the end of the whole COVID junk that was going on, uh, they all gathered together and there was a stampede and like, I think, I don't know how many, but hundreds at least. I don't know, maybe it was 50, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many, but a bunch of Jews died in the stampede. Celebrating Lagba Omer last year. So this year when they went, they were a little bit more ordered about it and they it, it wasn't as happy because they were remembering the people that died the previous year. This is in Israel. Okay. Now, there, there's, and I put this on the bottom page, page one, and I don't want this to be misunderstood, but I looked online. Lucifer has a bloody obsession with, with what they call the magic number 33. That's very interesting. 33 is considered by Satanists to be the most powerful and mysterious number. Significant bloodletting on the 33rd parallel is considered most magically powerful. Even the Battle of Armageddon will be fought astride the 33rd parallel, okay? Now this is a writing about the Masons. Listen to this. If a life is taken close to the north, northern 33rd parallel, that fits with the Masons' demonic mythology in which they demonstrate their worldly power by spilling human blood as at a predetermined locale. The Illuminists believe that bloodshed on or near the 33rd parallel is ritually very powerful. And they have Wars and different things that have happened along that parallel. Now, this is satanic. That doesn't make 33 a bad number. Okay. Think about three as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit pointing up. Okay. Amen. Amen. And think of like this. Yes. And the three pointing down. Okay. That is us. We are made of body, soul, and spirit. Okay? And they're intertwined. We're intertwined with the nature of God. That's the true 33. But Satan likes to distort and twist and be lifted up. As we lift up God in the Star of David, Satan has his own Star of David. It's not called the Star of David with him. It's 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 a deluding evil that that Masons, Freemasons, all these people are into, okay? And, there, and, and Satan has specifically made certain areas that are connected to that number 33. But that doesn't mean he has a right to 33. Uh, I, I forgot, I wanted to ask Josh this week what 33 means, what the Hebrew letters are for 33. Uh, I know it's the Gimel, right? It's, it's the second one. Top of the Gimel. Tav and the Gimel. Kav. Kav. and the Gimel. Kav. Okay, it's like that. <laughs> okay. But anyhow, I, I don't want to get all, all caught up in, into this. But I just want you to see that unfortunately our people, the Jewish people, okay, the people of Israel, are, if they're not in the spirit, they're going to be in the flesh and they're going to get caught up in all this Luciferian junk too. Yes. Sorry, it's the Lamed and the Gimel. The Lamed and the Gimel. So, so there, even with that, Lamed. Oh, that's where they get the word log, right? Of course, that makes sense. Log by Omer, it's the 33rd day of the Omer. Okay, but where did it get this? I mean, where did it get it as connected to the 33rd day of the Omer? 
and turned into a big celebration. I looked it up one day and I found out that actually Lagba Omer is nothing. It's worthless. Now, if I told that to a rabbi, they might get really upset with me. Especially when they believe a lot of the stuff they believe about Lagba Omer. But if you go back to ancient times, there was no Lagba Omer. Okay, but there was something else. It was the 28th day of ER, or the 40th day of the Omer. Okay. So, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's already getting late. Okay, so. 45 people, thank you. Yeah. And uh, Shavuot means what? Shavuot is actually the 50th day. It's seven complete weeks, or the 50th day, or Pentecost. It's the same way. A pentagram is actually seven. Uh, seven sides, right? Or seven, seven points. Five. Five. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant, yeah, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, you're right. It is five. It's seven complete weeks. That's where we get the word Shavua from. And five were a, a period of 50 days. So that's where we get the word Pentecost from. 50 days. Okay, so let's look, uh, go on, on page. Um, Page, page uh, three, top of page three, uh, where it says we're the real important and appointment. What is the real important number and appointment during the Emerald County? Uh, the 28th of ER was originally in ancient times a day when our people went to the tomb of Samuel or Shmuel the prophet as a memory of his death on the 28th of ER. He was on a Nazarite vow all the days of his life. You don't cut your hair. Now pay attention to this. Children would get their first haircut on this day. There was wine and sweets and celebration. We would all love this day. So it was a big day of celebration. When the Jews were forbidden to go to Samuel's tomb by the Romans, they instead did these things to the memory of Rabbi Simeon. Bar Yochai's death, the writer of the Zohar. In other words, the first haircut in celebrating, celebrating is now Lagba Omer. Because they couldn't go to Jerusalem. They were forbidden by the Romans. So they adopted this other thing which happened outside of Jerusalem. But they never changed back when they got the land back. They still kept Lagba Omer and they ignored it. But God made them. God made Israel celebrate celebrate the 40th day of the Omer. How? By giving them Jerusalem back on the same day. Wow. Okay, think about that. What are the odds? I don't even think most Jews know this. Wow. But, and yet, and get this, Lagba Omer is not a national holiday. But you know what it is? The 40th day. Because they got, they got the rest of Jerusalem back. It's been turned into a day called Jerusalem Day or the Day of Jerusalem. Okay, uh, to celebrate the Six Day War. This happened in 1967. It's a recent activity, well, you know, recent as some, some of us were uh, alive. I was only two years old at the time. Okay, but this happened in, our, in many of our lifetimes. Hello, you're welcome to come in. Okay, so, so this, these events, these things happen on the 28th of the year. Now, how far does it go back? Remember, Samuel was the last of the judges. Okay? He was one of the most important figures in Jewish history. Our sages describe him as equivalent of, to Moses and Aaron combined. Samuel was the last of the Shokti and the judges who led the people of Israel in the four centuries between the passing of Joshua and the establishment of the kingdom. And the author of the biblical books of Judges. Samuel and the book of Ruth. Samuel was born in the city of Rama in the year 2830 from creation, 931 BCE, after his barren mother, Hannah, prayed for a child at the tabernacle in Shiloh and pledged, O Lord of hosts, if you will give your main servant a man child, a man child, I shall dedicate him to Jehovah or Elohim all the days of his life. That's from 1 Samuel 1.11. At age two, his mother brought him to Shiloh in fulfillment of her vow, and he was raised by Eli, the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest. Shortly thereafter, Samuel had his first prophetic communication. 
in 1 Samuel 3. In 890 BCE, Samuel succeeded Eli as the leader of the Jews. Okay, now go to page 4. Okay, now look at look at what it says here. Uh, Shmuel, the Hebrew word there, in the middle of page 4. God who hears. That's what his name Shmuel means. El, or our God who hears. Shmuel. Okay, and he comes from Rama. You know what Rama means? Rama means to ascend. Okay, and if you go to the root of Rama, it's the word room, which means to rise up, to be exalted, to be lifted up. Okay, go to a high place. Okay, so let's put the whole meaning of, of um, Shmuel from Rama together. Ascend to the place where God is and he will hear you. That's what it means, okay? Where is God? He is in Jerusalem in heaven, the new Jerusalem, okay? Now, if you, this, this would take too long to explain, okay? There's two ways you count the Omer. Today, they have, the Jews have adopted that you count from after the first day of unleavened bread, which is called Hakamatsa which is right after Passover, okay? But there's a problem with that because it says you were to count seven complete weeks and the only way it's complete is from Sunday to Saturday, Saturday being the seventh. So it had to have started on a Sunday and I'm not gonna go into all the reasons why. They are in this study and they're in other studies, okay, that I have, okay? Uh, but there had to be seven complete weeks. Now, if you're following the mainstream Jewish calendar, you are never going to match up the 40th day to the month to ER 28, the day when they would they would go up to Shmuel or Samuel's tomb. You would never. Once in a while, you would match it up. Okay, like the, like even this year it doesn't match up. Now, now get this. If you follow the calendar where there are seven complete weeks. Almost every time, the 40th day coincides with, with, with ER 28 on the Jewish calendar. Okay, now why is that important? Because Yeshua, Jesus, ascended on the 40th day. Okay, now, where did he ascend to? It, it's, um, actually, I have to use it. This is the over calendar, the extra one. There's only one week left of the over calendar. Uh, if you want an explanation of that, you'll have to ask me later, okay? But this is what it says in Ephesians 4, 1 to 16. We are to walk in a worthy manner of the calling for which we are, have been called, with humility, gentleness, patience, showing tolerance to one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and a bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, as we are called, one whom we are calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Does that say there's the Baptist and there's a Pentecostal and there's a Catholic? It says one Lord, one faith, one immersion, one God and Father. In other words, there is not Mary and Jesus and all this. There's only Yeshua. There's only our Father in heaven. Okay? And Elohim and Father was over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Messiah's gift. In verse 8, Ephesians 4, 8. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, get it? Like it's the meaning of Samuel of Rama means to ascend to a high place. Okay. And where and where was it? Where were they ascending to? Where was his tomb? In Jerusalem. Okay. Ascend up to Jerusalem. That's what Samuel means. Samuel of Rama means. Okay. And and it says when he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. And now the expression he ascended it also means except that he had descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is himself. Also he who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. He gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Messiah, until we attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, 
and the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Messiah. Some say the omer of the stature. So it's all this is all counting in the omer talk. Okay, so um, I just want you guys to understand this. Everything about ascending up in ancient times. When they would get their first haircut, because Samuel was on a Nazarite vow, and you don't have your haircut, and you don't celebrate, so they would have their first drink of wine. They would have their, a huge celebration. You know what they do in Lakba Omer? They get their first haircut. They have wine. They have the celebration. They took that from the original celebration of the ascending up on the 28th of the yard to Jerusalem, to, to the tomb of Samuel the prophet. Now, they still do today. Some still go up to the tomb of Samuel. But it's much less significant than, than the celebration of Lagba Omer. Okay, so, okay, so but, but how is this important to us? Well, Yeshua is, he ascended where? Into heaven. He ascended into the New Jerusalem. Okay? Why is it so important that God gave Jerusalem back to Israel on the same day that you would go up to us? Ascend to the, the prophet Samuel's tomb. But also on the same day, the 40th day of the Omer, the Yeshua ascended up to the heavenly one. He was given, when, on that day when he gave gifts, he gave Jerusalem as a gift to Israel in 1967. He gave it back. Therefore, and it's amazing, but all the trouble that Israel's been having has to do with that Temple Mount. That is the highest place. That was where the temple was. Okay, so this is why they have trouble. They have that ugly looking dome. I don't care how pretty it looks to our eyes to see it. That thing's going down one day. It's going to be gone. It's not pretty. It's ugly. Do you know what it says in that dome? There's a little thing that says that God has no son. <laughs> that thing is an abomination. And everybody looks and says, oh, how pretty that's true is so No, uh uh. It's evil. That dome. Okay, it's. Then there's a mosque too on there, and that's all that has to go. When God's ready, it's the right time. You've got to even tell that to Christina when we're at, on the Temple Mount in 2008. That God's going to take care of this. Okay, so um, we are ascending in our faith. We're moving up. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. That's what Abraham was looking for. This is not our home. Okay? We're just visitors. Okay, so, you know, I want you to think about that. There's a lot of information, things that have happened in, you know, in, in Jubilees, because when he gave it, it was a Jubilee. Uh, it was a Jubilee year for Jerusalem, because something happened 50 years prior to that, and something happened 50 years prior to that. So, there's a lot going on. Sunday, or the beginning of this evening, is it tomorrow, is a very special day. It's a very special day that we remember that God has given us an inheritance. He's given us a land. He's given us a home whose builder and maker is God. And Messiah made the way. He made the way. And like he ascended, we are ascending slowly. We're going to get there eventually. Okay. To the New Jerusalem. That is our home. Okay. So you can see more of the notes. But I think it's extremely exciting that God gave Jerusalem back of all days on the 28th of Iyar, the day that Jesus said that the other Samuel, Samuel's tomb, the prophet Samuel's tomb, and the day that Yeshua ascended into heaven. Amen. Okay. Very important that we are in a process of ascending. I don't mean to say like like the New Age people and all that. We are we are not going down. We're going up. Okay, when you follow the Lord, it says he raises up the humble. Okay, he raises up the lowly, the broken. Now, if you're arrogant, you're going to go down before you go up. Uh, if you repent, when you're going down. Okay, what I'm saying is, the way of God is humility and brokenness and humbleness, and God will raise you up. We're in a constant state of going up. Okay. So, um, that's what I wanted to share with you. We celebrate Jerusalem. We celebrate uh, what it represents. And it, it literally means city of peace. It's our peace. Our peace is not of this world. 
We have a peace within us. And, and God wants us to love Jerusalem. He wants us to pray for its peace. Even the physical one in the world. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He will prosper those that love you, it says in the scriptures. Okay? And, and, and keep, keep that in mind all, all the time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do some closing blessings. Uh, Josh, can bring up that closing blessing? <laughs> And on the ironic benediction, and we're gonna. Uh, well, I'll tell you. It, I'll tell you in a little bit. Abba and in Yeshua, Lord, I ask that you just help us understand and always remember, Lord, that we're we are rising up, Lord, into the, the heavenly dwelling, even our heavenly calling, even into the glory, Lord. Abba, for the glory is coming down, and we are rising up into the glory. Abba, I ask, Lord, for you to raise up your people that are humble and broken and contrite. Abba, in this hour, and bring down the arrogant, bring down the wicked, bring down the evil, and all their plots, Lord. Expose. Expose every evil, Lord, that has been hidden, Abba. And, and I ask, Lord, for every righteous person and every good person who has lived by your precepts, bring them up, raise them up. They have been hidden away. No one wants to hear what they have to say. They call evil good, and they call good evil, Abba. But you... Call good good and evil evil. And you said evil will get worse. Then that means the righteous gets more righteous. And that means those who are in darkness might get more dark, but we who are in the light get more bright. Hallelujah. And I ask Lord that you would cause us to to shine with the brightness of the Jerusalem above. Hallelujah. Of the uh, of the, the holy Yerushalayim, Lord, the, the 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 true city of peace. Yerushalayim is more than one. Um, it's like all of us are like. In a way, like a, a little Yerushalayim, wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever way we walk. Lord, we are seeking to know your ways and walk in your paths, Abba. Show us your ways. Show us your paths, Abba, that we can walk in, Abba. The righteous, Lord, have a Torah, Lord, while the wicked have no law. They operate in lawlessness, in hatred, in violence. But, but we who follow you, Lord, who follow Yeshua, who follow Jesus, and the truth of who he is, follow the Torah, Abba. The righteousness, the law, Abba, of, of righteousness, the law of the Spirit, Abba, in a name of Yeshua. Abba, I just lift up these people, Lord. I lift up this, this again, as a righteous movie, Lord, I ask if there's no electronic problems, Abba, that you send that the Lord of hosts, Lord, to, to, to do battle, Lord, against any darkness that's trying to cause problems with the sound system or the light system. Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus on the side. So, uh, Josh, Baruch Atai Avobar Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Zemek Lecha Eolam Natan Betokhenu Baruch Atai Avobar Eloheinu Torah Amen Blessed are you our Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah truth and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Lord. Giver of the Torah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.